All right, so let's learn about what set driven keys are before we start applying them to our rig here. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to use some simple primitives here. Um, let's just create a uh, cube right in the center. Let's create a uh, sphere right here. And I'm going to create a cone. You don't you can work along if you want to uh, if you want to, but uh, it definitely is just a demonstration. Just really I want you to understand the uh, basics of what the heck is going on with set driven keys here alright so basically set driven keys the best way to explain it I guess is uh, it's very much like uh, keyframing on the uh, timeline here except we're going to actually be keyframing the positions and rotations of my sphere and cone as I change the values in my channel box here so we're actually going to keyframe on our channel box values so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the animate menu go to set driven key uh, set driven key and go to set this is going to bring up a uh, crazy new menu called the set driven key menu and uh, you'll notice two things there's two windows here a driver and a driven so let's talk about a light switch all right uh, the relationship between uh, a light switch and the overhead lights in a classroom for instance whenever I want to turn on the lights I flick the switch and the lights come on so you could say that the light switch is the driving factor on the lights being come on uh, the lights being turned on the lights are being driven by the action of the light switch so we have a driver and driven our light switch would be the driver and our uh, lights lights overhead lights would be our driven okay so let's uh, make our cube our driven in this example so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna select my cube and I want my uh, values over here when I say uh, scale something or rotate something I want scaling or rotating my properties of my cube to drive the uh, certain actions on my cone and sphere over here alright let's go ahead and go into shaded mode so the, the, my cube is my driver so I'll select it and I'll load driver and instantly we see P cube one come up and all the values in my channel box are mirrored over here visibility translate rotate scale all that good stuff and what I want to do is whenever I uh, rotate my cube left and right I want my uh, sphere to move away or come closer okay so by defining uh, this action I can adjust the direction or the translation of my sphere so let's set that up all right I'm gonna select my sphere now and make that my driven so I'll load driven and instantly P sphere comes up over here okay and all the values in the channel box appear as well all right so what we're gonna do is I want my rotation and my Y direction here to basically affect the translation or the movement of my sphere all right so I'll set my rotate Y value to zero so I'm going to grab my rotate vi, uh, y value in my cube. This is what's going to drive that action, my rotate y. And I want my sphere to move in the uh, z axis. Okay. So what I'm going to do, see how it's moving in the z axis. I'm going to come over to my driven, p sphere driven, and select my translate z. All right. So I have my value selected. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe different values to make my sphere move. I guess the best way to see it is if we do it. So with my rotate Y at zero and my sphere a little bit uh, away at negative two right there, I'm gonna go ahead and key this value. What that does is it tells Maya that when my uh, cube is facing this rotate Y direction, my sphere is gonna be in this position. So when my rotate Y, y is at zero, my sphere is gonna be in this position. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to rotate Y and I'm going to come over and maybe move it about negative 40 degrees. All right. So when I turn it uh, to the left, I want my sphere to move away. So my rotate Y is at negative 40. And I'm going to grab my sphere and I'm actually going to move it as well. Okay. And uh, what this does is whenever my rotate Y will be at negative 40, my P sphere will now be at negative four units away from my cube. So if we key that, uh, key that look what happens whenever I uh, change my rotate Y. See how it's like I've keyframed two different positions in time for it, but instead of in time, the value here of rotate Y is the difference. Okay, 
So that's uh, how we can chain our uh, Q position to our rotation. And what do I want to do with my uh, cone is show you that we can basically use my uh, scale factor here. Let's say uh, all my scale here. When I shrink my cube from the center, I want my uh, cone to rotate downwards, almost like a finger. Okay, so I'm going to go here and make sure my scale's at default one. My my uh, cube is still driving the action, so I'm going to select all my scale values here. All right, or let's just say I guess you can't select them all. Maya won't let you, so that's a good lesson. Let's just say whenever I uh, squish my cube in scale it in the x direction that's what rotates my cube so we'll just set my scale x as the driving uh, value for my rotation of my cone alright and I'm going to come back here and maybe set my pivot point kind of uh, at the center of the grid there so now my cone will rotate from the center of the grid so whenever I squish my cube in the x direction I want my uh, uh, cone to rotate downwards so now we have a new driven so we have to load that driven in so instead of p-sphere, we now have p-cone, and uh, the, the value I want to change is my rotate x, okay? When I scale my cube in x, I want my uh, cone to rotate down. So to do that, uh, let's see, what, did I, what, what controls the rotation that I want? All right, rotate x. So I'm going to select rotate x on my p-cone, and I want to uh, keyframe a default starting position for both these values. So when my scale x is at 1, my q, uh, q cone is going to be at a rotation of negative of at 90 degrees. So we're just going to keyframe those two values together. So now what I'm going to do, you've got to do this in order. i got to scale my cube in. Now my uh, scale on my cube is at like 0.1, or 0.1, uh, 0.2 rather. Uh, and then I'm going to go down here and actually rotate my cube down to like 180 or 175. So after I've affected my scale X and I've rotated my cube down, I need to keyframe it. Be careful of this though. Say we have my uh, cube at 1. I've keyframed a default value. All right, so I'm going to, I know I want my cone to go down there. And I know that I want my uh, scale X to go in, so I'm going to scale that. Dang it, my cube just jumped back. Let me. All right, okay. So now I'm going to set my scale value. All right, what's happening is Maya sees there's only one uh, value keyframe to this cube here. So anytime you change any of these values here for your cube, your cone is going to always jump back at that starting position. What we have to do is we have to uh, tweak the driver first, and then we can come down and rotate our cone and then we can keyframe so my p cube one my scale x is chosen that's the driver my scale x is the driver for this action my driven is my uh, rotate x for my cone so when I key that look what happens now whenever I scale my cube they're keyframed together Maya knows that at one my cube my cone is going to be right there and then when I scale it in to point one it knows to rotate it down because I've keyframed those values like so. All right, this this offers a lot of uh, utility because basically what we can do now is we can take like my knee twist and toe tap over here that I've created and plug them to uh, my IK handles in groups and basically I'll pose my IK groups and it'll basically allow me to mimic those actions just by changing some values over here in my channel box. Okay. Alright, so that's basically a short little lesson on set driven keys. In the next chapter, we're going to apply these techniques to our actual foot control so we can start driving our foot actions.